Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Did you have trouble finding um, the different changes in um, the board? No. If you did? No. Okay. Because they did have the old one up there and they had the, the new one up. Did you notice that? I, yeah, because I originally found the old one and I was reading through it. I'm like, wait, this sounds the same. And then I typed in 20. 21 and then the new one came up and it was like highlighted new um uh, but it was basically the same things that you said however one thing i i remember you saying we didn't have to do eyeliner but there was eyeliner in the makeup no i think it was no um there was eyeliner i don't think that we had to do one thing that was on there but the we also liner? had to do like on the this doesn't tell you in here but he made sure that he told us that you have to which i don't i don't see the reason for this you can't put all of your supplies out on the palette, okay? Like when we set up for the makeup, uh, putting all yeah. of that stuff out. He said, you can't do that. You have to do one at a time. So you would have to like, okay, sanitize your hands, put in the foundation in there, put the foundation on the client, okay? Sanitize your hands, then grab the powder and put a little bit in there. I go, what's the difference? You're still putting it on the palette. Because well, yeah. we don't want them to do that. And I'm like, why? And he's like, because it, then it's like, um, what did he say? He goes, it's like a single use. I go, but it's not a single use because they have to scrape it off of the powder, I mean, off the container and then put it on. That's not single at that point. But whatever, if that's what you want us to do, that's a stupid. Because you're yeah. doing the same thing, you know? You, you really are, except that you, you get it prepped prior. I don't understand that part. <laughs> What's the matter, Danielle? <laughs> like, uh, I don't want to be tired. here. Yeah. <laughs> Have you heard any more news um, about schools closing or not, Miss Jeannie? Not yet. I had a client oh. yesterday. Um, I was talking to her and she's a teacher and she was saying that her, um, granted this was for, I believe for elementary, but her principal told them to make packets for the next two yep. months because they're gonna be closing. Oh, really? Well, that's what her, that's what her school is doing. I don't, I'm not sure if that- What school is this one? Uh, I wish I would have remembered. I just assumed that she, because she came to us, you know, in Turlock. So I assumed that she was in our county. I forgot to ask her what school it yeah, was. Yeah, Turlock is um is Stanislaus County. Yeah, no, no, I know. Okay. I just figured because oh. she was in Turlock coming to us to like, you know, oh, for an I appointment. I thought she lived from here. So I didn't ask her what school. Um, yeah, uh, we were told to make packets too, but not two months. It's two weeks. Oh, just okay. They told her two months until <laughs> January. Oh no, we're not closing it now. Mm -mm. No, we're not doing that. Unless they close everything down. Because right now, if they the first thing that would probably go would be um, the inside working on each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. That would go first. <laughs> and at that point, then it would go the next time it probably would go down to where you have to work on the dolls only. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I don't understand this whole thing at all. I really don't. Me neither. Miss Jeannie, they, they put out an article that if um, Biden actually gets inaugurated on the first, that everything is closing for two months. What? He doesn't get inaugurated until like like the end of January or something like that, right? On January 1st, he becomes it's, president. So if he's actually the president. When do they do it on January 1st? If it's if he's actually that's when the new president goes in. If he's actually the president by January first, then everything is closing so? for Yeah, I don't think months. he is either. <laughs> I don't, but that's not my yeah. business. <laughs> I don't think he is I don't think it's over either. But that's you know, near here they're there. My mother's <laughs> right. It's just I don't know what it is. I just want to go to school. Right. And I just want to go to work, okay? I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only person that thinks being off a year and a half, okay, is really worth it, okay? It doesn't, you know, it's not as bad as the flu as far as, like, death in it. That's what really bothers me, that they've blown this thing way up out of proportion. And I, I granted, there are a lot of people sick, okay? But 
as we get older, it takes a lot longer for us to get over the flu, no matter what, anyways, because I get that. I'm 60 something years old. I don't, you know, go down for one day. I'm usually down for a week <laughs> when it really hits me. And I know that it happened last, like last year, because I got sick. And then I thought I felt better for maybe a day or two, and then I got sick again. So it was like, I know that's what it was back then. So if you think about it, this thing's been going around. A lot of people thought that they got it in October or November last year. And that's why they didn't show any symptoms, you know, this throughout the rest of the year. But to put everybody on lockdown in the middle of summer, that was kind of silly. You know, if you think about it, people usually don't get the flu around then. Now it's flu season, I get that, but you're right. Neither here nor there. So let me take roll really quick. Okay. And we just saw uh, did everybody finish their work? I'm kind of curious because I'm gonna ask you while I'm doing this right now. Tell me which um what you want to see, like when you come back tomorrow. You know the list that you wrote out for me? Chemical peels. <laughs> Okay. The suction Spray machine. Tan. The suction machine. What else? Spray tan. Okay, that one's gonna have to wait. <laughs> what about the back treatments? Because I wasn't there for the, the day you guys did the one time you guys did the back treatments. <laughs> okay. Um, we can do that. That's basically it's a facial on the back. Exactly the same thing that you do, only I have gloves for sloughing. Okay. Instead of using a facial or a facial brush. You know, you can, but it's a lot nicer when you use the sloughing gloves and you've got, you know, that touch going on. Are we able to um, see the wraps then? Like the, because I don't know if we've done, um, the, I don't the know. Body if, wraps? Uh, yeah, the we body wraps. That. I can't think of it. We did that. We did that one, the body wraps. We were doing dry wraps. We did wraps the ones. ace bandage one. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. That is what that the one. High the high fragrancy, Miss Jenny. Wrap, the the high fragrancy. Every other wrap that you do that is not a compression wrap because the ace bandage is a compression. Okay, you're going to apply the product, wrap them up in some type of plastic, whether it's saran wrap or, or plastic, like I use the sheet, the long sheet, the plastic. And then you're going to put them in the same bed setup that I did for the ace bandage one. So you have to have a wool blanket, a solar blanket, right? Okay, and then they're wrapped up in the plastic and they lay against that wool blanket and that's solar blanket to keep them warm. You kind of close up their neck here with a towel and close up their feet so they can sweat and put a heat lamp on them. So every one of them likes, is like that. Paraffin, you paint it on and you wrap them up. Um, there's another one that's for weight loss that's, um, it's a cream, okay? And you just apply the cream to the body, wrap it in saran wrap instead of just regular plastic and you put them in the same type of blanket, okay? Some of them are required at least a minimum of 30 minutes, some of them 45 minutes. Okay, but anything that's wrapped in saran wrap or ace bandages is going to be tight. So if they're claustrophobic, you're not gonna put them in there. Does that make sense? Because that's a tighter wrap than the rest of the other ones. The other ones are looser, but they're still like wrapped up. Okay, um, what else did you guys come up with? High frequency, you know, this one. Always I ask you about how it's working. Okay, high frequency, yeah. what else? What else? Extractions. Oh, yeah, I know. We need that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, if I'm looking at Jasmine, where are you? Um, you can't, I would not do, especially on you, not do extractions and peel on the same day. Dang it. On okay. yourself. Okay. I, I mean, peel. I've only done that. I've only done it like once on somebody and he was really tough. It was a guy that had very bad acne scarring. Okay, and then he'd have the occasional blackhead. I did that on him, but I was, He's, I go, it's gonna burn. He said, yeah, it really burns bad. I'm, he goes, but I'm tolerating it. So I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do that again. Uh, that I'll do the peel. Out? What you're trying to do is shrink the follicle, not, you know, do the impaction and leave it in there to close it back up for the peel. It's just it's not meant to do that because it's too burning to put it mildly. <laughs> All right, anything else? No, yes? Everything I want to do, Miss Janie, we can't uh -huh. do it. <laughs> Why? The well, spray tan, I'm going to try, I'm, I'm try and get that on Saturday. So if you guys are not here on Saturday, if I get that for Saturday, and you'll know tomorrow if I do, okay? You have to be here for Saturday to watch it because I won't be doing it again, okay? For a while. You guys will have to 
be able to do it, but you've got to know how to use it, okay? And so if you need to practice on it afterwards, okay, what we do is I tell you, you're gonna sound, gonna sound crazy. You're gonna wash the windows outside of the school. And the reason for it is because it's got a nozzle on it that's kind of like, you know, like your garden nozzle and you're using the same type of technique. So when you wash the window, it's not really washing it, but when you put the water on the window, what happens is you can see how it lays onto the, the sheet of glass, what it's like. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you get an even look and you'll see where you are, you're missing it, where you're keeping the, the nozzle too close to it or you've left it too long in one spot, that kind of stuff, okay? So Didn't you say that I can't do the chemical peels too because I'm pregnant? Yes. See, I can't do anything. <laughs> You can give it, but you can't get one. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Sorry about that. This okay. is a rip off, Miss Janie. <laughs> okay. Um, Kathleen is not here again, right? Diana. She's not here. Kat's been right here. Miss Janie, I'm right here. Oh, oh, where are you, honey? I'm right here. I'm like, okay, I got a movie. There. Okay. It's like it, the screens actually just flip screens on me every once in a while. So I'm trying to look. Avery, she here? No. Okay. Oh, and Megan. All right. So we didn't get to finish our test questions yesterday. Okay. So before I even go into um, anatomy, which is the next one. Okay. I'm going to go through these test questions. So why don't I just start at 25? Because everybody got up to 24, correct? Can you repeat 24 because I missed it yesterday? Yeah, okay. Have you already got their, their papers out? Okay, so 24 is which of the following terms identifies a positively charged electrode? It's anode, A-N-O-D-E. Jenny, um, number 13, please. 13? Yeah, please, thank you. Something water. All right, um, hold on one second. 13 is in the event, this is a never question by the way, a uh -huh. never, okay? In the event of a fire results from an overload, the esthetician should extinguish it with water because it should never extinguish it from water, with water. All right, are we ready for 25 then? Okay, a negatively charged electrode is called a cathode. Cathode, C-A-T-H-O-D-E. All right, 26. Which type of alternating current can be adjusted to different voltages to produce heat? High frequency okay. current, high frequency current. Twenty-seven, the narrow space between the electrode and the skin used to provide germicidal healing and drying effects during the high frequency treatment is called a spark gap. Spark gap. Miss Janie, did you uh -huh. say like before the first time, like when we went over this chapter, did you say mm -hmm. we can't do sparking? Yeah, we're not allowed to do it the way that I showed you where you hold it a little bit away from the client like this. Mm -hmm. So what they're asking you to do is to take the gauze and fold it over a couple layers. So I'm going to show you in a piece of paper. Like if I folded the paper over, can you see this? Yes. Okay, fold it over like this. I keep folding it, keep folding. You see how it makes a, a space? So if yes. I lay the gauze on the, on the skin, there would be a gap between it, but there's gauze in between it. Okay. okay. So you're not actually keeping it away from it and making that lightning bolt. You're still creating the gap, but it's not like a, a bolt. Can you show us how to do the sparking again tomorrow? Yes. Okay, yeah. cool. That's, that's easy. Okay. Um, 28. Which of the following is an alternating current that when interrupted produces mechanical non-chemical reactions? Ferratic current. Ferratic current. Twenty-nine. 
an alternating current that produces mechanical effects and causes muscle contractions is known as sinusoidal current. And it's S-I-N-U-S-O-I-D-A-L, sinusoidal current. Thirty is going to be an accept question. All of the following are contraindications or conditions that suggest that it's inadvisable to perform this procedure in a skincare center, except low blood pressure, low blood pressure, because that's not a contraindication. Okay, 31. The portion of the electromagnetic spectrum humans can see is called visible light, visible light. Okay, 32. Which of the following lights creates the closest substitute for natural sunlight? Incandescent light, incandescent light. I N C A D E S C E N T. It's like can, you the light bulb. can you repeat the question, Miss Janie? Sorry. Which of the following lights creates the closest substitute for natural sunlight? And it's like a regular light bulb is what it is. It's called incandescent light. Remember I was talking about what type of lighting you should have in your salon because when a client comes out, there's, they don't have any makeup on their skin, okay? So you don't want the lighting to be like cool or fluorescent because it's gonna look like you can see every vein in their skin. But if you use the incandescent lighting in there, it gives them a nice glow and they look pretty good when they come out of there. <laughs> That's what you want. <laughs> kind of like when you go to the jewelry store and all the diamonds are sparkling because <laughs> it has the right light against it. <laughs> and you get it home and you're like, my diamonds don't, they don't sparkle like they did in that store. <laughs> it's not same. Okay, 33. A form of thermal energy in which the transfer of heat is via liquid or gas is called convection, convection. Okay, 34, what is the term given to describe the effect created when current travels through a water-based solution and onto the body? It's an electrochemical effect. Electrochemical effect. It's got that electricity and chemicals in there. Okay, 35 is a not question. Okay. Which of the following electrodes is not used for promoting or increasing product penetration? Comb. Comb. And they're talking about the rake that we use on the high frequency but they call it a comb, it's known as a rake to me. <laughs> All right, 36. Which of the following pieces of skincare equipment is more expensive and elaborate magnifying mirror that incorporates a black light and allows the client to see their reflection? Dermoscope, dermoscope. Okay, 37. A device also known as a vaporizer is known as a facial steamer, facial steamer. Okay. 38 of the following machines, which acts like a miniature vacuum cleaner to help in deep pore cleansing. And it's suction. called the suction machine. Yeah, let me go close this door. Okay, 39, an automated spring device, which can help achieve a more thorough cleansing or toning after extraction or suction is called the spray machine, the spray machine. Can you repeat 38, please? Yes, of the following machines, which acts like a miniature vacuum cleaner to help in deep pore cleansing. It's known as a suction machine.
Okay, you guys ready for 40? Yes. Okay, a unique atomizer that allows for the application of various herbs, extracts, or astringents is known as the electric pulverizer. Electric pulverizer. Forty-one is a long answer, so let me read the question first. It's and it's a notch question, by the way. Okay, which of the steps listed below will not help keep the tube on the spray machine free of debris? Okay, and the answer is to wait for hissing, because that's the sound that it makes. Wait for hissing to stop. Okay, before attaching the plastic tube. Wait for hissing to stop before attaching the plastic tube. Plastic what? Tube. Oh, okay. Tube. Because all of the other ones are basically what you would do with the machine, and this one isn't. Okay, do you remember how I told you to hold it? Holes and catching, no? Yes, but where, where do you hold the machine? How do you hold the machine? Mm -hmm. How, how do you do that? Anybody remember? It's the one that sounds like the cappuccino. Yes, thank you, Angela. That's exactly how you hold it. <laughs> All right, 42. Which of the following attachments and speed settings would be used on a client with dry, sensitive skin during the exfoliation? And it's soft brush at a slow speed. A soft brush at a slow speed. What the answer, soft brush? Yeah, soft brush at a slow speed. Okay, 43. The exfoliation machine used to achieve a light resurfacing of the epidermis is known as the microdermabrasion machine. The microdermabrasion machine. Forty-four is an accept question. The benefits of using an electric mask include all of the following except cooling the skin, cooling the skin. Okay, 45. Which of the following items identifies skincare equipment that's electronically heated and slipped onto the hands or the feet to help with product penetration deeper in the skin. And this is the treatment mittens and booties. Treatment mittens and booties. Forty-six. Electric containers that melt blocks of paraffin wax for use in the face hand, foot, and body treatments are called paraffin heating units. Paraffin heating units. It's Avery. <laughs> All right. Um, 47, specially designed heating containers that melt wax for hair removal procedures are known as wax heating machines or wax heating units, excuse me. Wax heating units. It's 48, not 47. 47. No, that was 47. Okay. 47 is yeah, yeah, okay, specially okay. designed heating okay, container. 46 treatment, okay. 47 uh, heating, you, okay, yeah. 48. Yeah. Okay, 46 Sorry, was yeah. paraffin. Yeah, um, body, no? Okay. 46, uh, 40, the body, paraffin. 47 paraffin. Okay, okay. Sorry, okay. I'm not with the number. No, 47 is wax heating okay. unit. 46 is paraffin. Oh. 
How? 46, not the, the booty? No, 46? 45 is the booties. 45. I think you, you did your numbering wrong, I think. Okay. 46 paraffin? Yes. Okay. 48. Which of the following allows warm, moist towels to be available for removing product from the skin during a face and body treatment? Hot towel cabinet. Hot towel cabinet. Forty-nine. What is the skincare machine called that features a combination of different electrical units into one piece of equipment? The multifunction machine. Multifunction machine. Okay, and the last one, it's a long answer also, and it's also an accept question, okay? Guidelines that should be used for making sure electrical equipment is maintained safely and in the most sanitary manner possible are represented by the following statements, except, and it's wipe down the bed with soap and water at the end of the day. So wipe down the bed with soap and water at the end of the day. Because you know you have to clean it every single time you use it, right? But they're just saying that use it at the end of the day. Okay. Miss Janie, can you repeat number 37? Yeah. Thirty-seven is a device also known as a vaporizer, is a facial steamer. Miss Jenny, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm stuck like 45, 46, 47. I just want to make sure, okay? Uh huh. Yeah. 45 is treatment mittens and booties. Okay. Okay, 46 is paraffin heating unit. Okay, okay. 47 is wax heating unit. Okay. okay. And 48 is hot towel cabinet. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else need anything repeated? No? Miss Janie, so I know you just repeated 46. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I need you guys in class because, you know, being at home, it just doesn't help, huh? Today is <laughs> not like the greatest. <laughs> Animals distract us. Okay. I'm looking at things like peas distract me. <laughs> All right. 46 or 47? 46. Okay. Electric containers that melt blocks of paraffin wax for use in the face, hand, foot and body treatments are called paraffin heating units. Okay, thank you. I probably could have guessed that, but thank you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> okay, um, today's homework, I'm gonna give you, this is gonna be, I'm not going through the key terms because there are so many, okay, in anatomy. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you're looking at me like, mm. okay, I only went through the ones that are important that we discuss in the chapter, so. I'm not going to give you the ones that are like in our book for this. There's another list that I got from when I was teaching my cosmos because it covers the same information that we cover. So I want to make sure I go through the information. We don't have to know all of the bones because there was something like 178 or something like that. You don't have that many. I think there's only like 100 and 100 if that. Okay. But every one of the definitions is basically the definition that we use from our textbook. Okay. So just to get you started on this chapter, so you can have a little bit of free time for just a moment, okay? If you can pull out your phone and pull up a, a new um, window and search for weird facts about my body, okay? And then try and give me a couple of them that you can, you can see. I'm gonna give you a couple ones that I know of. You actually make um, enough acid in your stomach to melt razor blades. Okay, that acid in your stomach is that strong. Um, your foot size is from your wrist to your elbow. Okay, that's where your foot is. Okay, it should measure just right into that. Yeah, go ahead. I know you're trying. <laughs> I got one just off the top of my head. Okay. Okay. 
to find your perfect nude shade of lipstick, match it to your nipple. Like oh your my nipple God. Color. Okay, I'm going up to Mac like this. Okay, hold on just a minute. <laughs> and then your intestines are like basically the size of a school bus. What is that? Your intestines? So if you were to stretch out your intestines. Yeah, the first part of it is like 31 feet and then it goes into 27 feet and then something else. Yeah, yeah it's, it's huge. And then um, your body, like every seven years, changes or something. Uh-huh. So I didn't yeah, know like- that. And that's how I became allergic to shellfish in my 21st year of living. So just when you really want to have shellfish, no? Was that lobster, maybe? You know? No, I had crab, and all of a sudden I couldn't breathe on the way home, and I was like, something's not right. And I called yeah, like the sucks. nurse line, and they're like, you should probably go into the ER. And I'm like, oh, yeah. That- so. Yeah, before you can't breathe at all. <laughs> no. Oh my God. All right. Um, here's another one. Your eye, your textbook actually gives this one. Um, your eye is the same size when you're born as it is when you die. Okay, and then your body, actually, you when you're born, you have I forgot how many bones, but it's more bones that when you finally like grow up, when they finally give you um 24 is when they consider that the bones actually are, are grown from a full adult. So um, at that point, you have 204 bones, or 206 bones, excuse me, in your body. So what happens is the, your skull actually kind of fuses together because it actually was very soft when you were born so that you could come through the birth canal. But then it actually gets hard in the shell. Yep, there you go, just like that. Um, let me see if I can come up with some other. Oh, we make enough saliva in a lifetime to spill up. A swimming pool, a huge, huge swimming pool. Uh, aren't your ear, your nose, and your ears keep growing too? Okay, they say that, but you know what? Your your nose and your ear aren't. Um, it's skin and cartilage. It's not bone, really. You've got ear bones inside the canal, but you don't have. It's all cartilage. But what happens? Let me tell you this, and this it makes sense this way. Okay, when we age. You know how we start to shrink our bodies, like kind of shrink us down a little bit, little ladies and little men. But what happens is on when the gravity pulls around on the skin, it makes it heavier. So it starts drooping down here. It's not like all puffy up on your face anymore. As it does that, the skin lays closer to the bone. So with that being said, when your ears were so much like one size and when your face looks like it's shrinking or your skull, your ears are going to stay the same. So they look larger than their normally do. Do you see what I'm saying? You look at your grandmother and like how their faces actually shrink. Their whole body kind of just starts getting tinier. I don't know if it's because of the hunching or, or what, but they do start to get very tiny. So, but that's basically what happens. And the ears and the, and the nose, they are just made out of cartilage so they look like they are larger. Although, I don't know, Mr. Adrian's ears, I'm not kidding you, were like this. They were huge. And I would like, when I took my reflexology class, I was like, Oh, I want to do his ears. I can fit my whole finger in there. Because <laughs> like, people have such tiny ears, you can't get in there to actually give the massage in there. And I'm like, <laughs> it's weird though, huh? <laughs> Crazy things that <laughs> excite me. <laughs> ears. <laughs> All right. So go ahead. I'm going to give you like five minutes, okay, to look up some crazy stuff. And then you're going to come back in here and tell me what you found. Okay. This is the beginning of your anatomy, anyways. <laughs> if we were in a classroom, You'd be doing a bed, dead body on the floor. <laughs> okay, I have like sheet paper that goes down that we used to cover the desk with. And I would have one person, probably a, the smallest person in the classroom, lay on the paper and we would trace it. Yeah, I, I trace it. And then you would actually put the body together from that point. So that's why I mean, it's like a dead body on the, the floor. Okay, I'm still letting you look. Oh, this is just 
strange. I hear this phone, I'll be right back. too funny okay you saw me like looking around right i kept hearing this buzzing noise and i'm like where's my phone and i'm looking under everything i still could hear it and it it was playing a song that's why it was vibrating so loud and it was in the bathroom on top of the paper towel <laughs> and so i can hear it all the way in the classroom it was like zzz, zzz. <laughs> and i walk into the bathroom and it's like jamming okay <laughs> but it was an alarm to tell me what time it was <laughs> have you guys found some stuff It says here that um, our human nose can detect one trillion smells. What was it? Yeah, your nose can pick up or your taste buds. No, your nose can one trillion smells. Wow. Isn't that crazy? It's a lot. Yeah, it is kind of nuts. Anybody else have something? Yeah, so I found that 12% of people dream in black and white. Only 12%? 12%. Do you guys said remember? dream in black and white? Yeah, they yeah. dream in black and white. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Right? I, I didn't know if I did or not. I can't remember. Wait, wait, there's color in your I'm part of the There's colors in your dream? <laughs> That's why I'm surprised it's only 12%. <laughs> what? Do you dream in black and white, Jasmine? I never see color. Really? Really? How weird. I can't remember right? them. I mean, I remember, but I don't remember if it's black and white or color. Like I've had like this reoccurring dream of like a dinosaur chasing me, but like it's like an old school like Jurassic Park movie. Uh, <laughs> what scarred you, dude? Right, something's you know something's chasing her, so we've got to figure out something's going on here. <laughs> All right, what else did you guys find? I have one. One in every 2,000 babies is born with a tooth. With a tooth, yeah. I swear my son had teeth. That's why I wasn't breastfeeding. It was like, oh my God, you're biting on something. What the heck? <laughs> I know he could scream really loud, okay? And his suction was really, <laughs> I'm like, dang. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know how some of them do. There's actually been twins that have been born inside of another twin, like, the lady thought she was pregnant and they told her she was having twins. And then when it got closer to, there was no other baby in there. And they're like, okay, well, there's no baby inside. She goes, you mean it's like a stillborn? No, there's no baby inside there. And so, you know, they, well, maybe it was a mistake, but it wasn't because later on the child actually had started growing some crazy thing out the side of its head. And they literally found that was part of the baby that was stuck right there. It wasn't like a little embryo or anything like that but it was what was left of it. And sometimes isn't they that, just have teeth and hair coming out of it. It's crazy. Isn't that super like common though? Like I've heard of that before. Yeah. Like it's called fusion or something, but like I, I've heard like the twins who are like that, the one that like eats the other one can like feel like what the other one's supposed to feel. Like it's super weird. Well, they all do. They're all very like close to each other because they've been in the womb for like that close of a time period, nine months inside there and you can't move. So you do have a closeness with them, almost, especially if they're identical twins. I had um, a friend of mine when I was in beauty school. He was gorgeous. He looked like a woman, okay, seriously. Beautiful cheekbones, everything. And his twin sister, okay, she looked like a guy. And he was gay. She wasn't gay. I'm like, she should be gay. No, <laughs> Somewhere it looked like the genes just got mixed up when they were in there. <laughs> it's just strange how things work out. It just really is. I know you guys can find something else in there. So about twins, I saw uh -huh. this on Facebook. Um, this woman was trying to get um, like financial aid for her kids. So like from the government and they have to do DNA testing. It came back that her kids weren't hers. They weren't hers? They weren't hers. And so she was like, how are they not mine? Like I cared them for nine months, they're mine. Turns out she absorbed her twin and her twin's uterus is what carried the babies. Oh my God, that's even crazier. Yeah, I was like, 
what kind of weird stuff is this? Like, I didn't even know that even existed. Yeah, there's some weird stuff out there. Mm -hmm. Strange stuff. What'd you find, Catalina? Um, I seen on there that it says if you stretch out all your veins, that it could wrap around the entire globe. Yeah. So that, that's pretty long, so. Yeah. Um, Miss Jenny, I find the girl, uh, you know, her heart out her body. Yep. Mm -hmm. You see? You Nowadays, see she in, in the YouTube. In, okay. in vitro, they can actually repair the heart while she's still in the mother's womb. That's really bizarre. Yeah. I have a friend with three kidneys. Well, she should be donating one of those. She should donate <laughs> one of those to me. Right? <laughs> That's what I told her. And she was like, not amused. And I'm like, it's okay. I make that stupid joke all the time. It's okay. <laughs> Avery, what did you come up with? <laughs> She's like, I, like I didn't really see anything <laughs> like too different from what you guys were saying, but I thought it was pretty interesting that your highest blood flow is to the kidneys and your whole body. I wasn't expecting that. Everything out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is interesting. Griselda, what did you come up with? I know you guys. Um, <laughs> I am. One in 20 people have an extra rib who are most often men. Mm -hmm. Here's one for you. Do men and women have the same amount of ribs? No one's answering. Yes. Do they have an extra one or do they not have one? No, they have the same amount of ribs. We have yes, the same amount. Do. Most people that answer yes were talking biblical. You know, that Adam's rib actually built Eve, but that's not true. The only time you're actually missing a rib is if you have one removed, kind of like Cher or Manson or whatever. Okay. There's a couple of people who have. What it does, it puts you in danger for your um, internal organs because those ribs are there to protect the internal organs. So when you're missing one of them, all right, there's nothing there to protect, either your stomach, your, you know, your kidneys, whatever it is, it's supposed to be like right there. Um, Diana, what did you come up with? Um, I put your body gives off enough heat in 30 minutes to bring half a gallon of water to a boil. Oh, I could do that in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> heat I put off, <laughs> have a hot flash, I can boil it in five. <laughs> um, Megan, what'd you come up with? Um, I found two. One of them was that when you breathe normally, your airflow is actually only going through one nostril. You're not mm -hmm. using both of them all the time. Um, and then the other one I found was um, like how everybody has their own unique like fingerprints. Um, everybody has their own unique tongue print too. Yep. Except twins have the exact same. Did you know that? Yeah. Everybody Identical has their twins. own unique smell, except uh -huh. for twins also. Twins have the same smell. Yeah. In fact, our smell, our natural odor that we put out, and I'm not talking about when you're out there sweating and getting, you know, working at the gym or something like that, but your natural odor before you put any powders and lotions and creams and whatever on you. Okay. That's there to attract the opposite sex, believe it or not. Okay. And it Wait, sounds so kind of crazy. Me. So like huh? if one twin were to commit a murder, like. Yep. And it's yeah. happened. And it's happened. Keep That's dookie. Out. That sucks. Yep. Yeah. So anyways, that odor that you produce actually makes you attracted to that other partner. So if you think about it, I know, and don't even lie if you say this. It's not true. How many of you taken a, your boyfriend's t-shirt or something or husband's t-shirt when they were gone and like, oh, I miss them so much. And you can smell their, their little scent right on everything, right? Yeah, I can see y'all smiling right there. <laughs> not me, not me. <laughs> Here, here's one for you in the same regards to that. Uh -huh. um, my ex that I was with for 10 years, of course, you know, you, you smell his whatever, okay. endorphins or whatever they call that. There's a word for it. But mm -hmm. um, when I went through my divorce, there, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, when I went through my divorce and I started separating everything, including doing my laundry separate, I could actually smell the difference. So for 10 years doing our laundry <laughs> together, it there's like a whole different thing going on there with the fair. <laughs> but as soon as I separated, I could literally smell the difference between our two pheromones. 
when oh, I didn't wow. do laundry together. And I, I wasn't sleeping in the same room with him or anything. So we, we really were able to separate a lot. <laughs> so yeah, I, I actually could tell the difference. It was weird. Wow. So anybody else have one that they want to share with us? That I didn't get. Danielle, did you get one? And Yasara, you gave one. And Stephanie, you gave one, right? Yeah, but I had another one. Okay. So apparently you're more like your dad than you are your mom because there's more, um, like the scales are higher in the male sperm than they're on the eggs. So there's more data. Yeah, it from, takes you know, the dad and the mom. The male is the one that actually makes the female. The male partner is the mm -hmm. one that actually makes like, the male female. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you're like, no, I'm not like my dad, right? <laughs> I'm you might not mom, realize how much you have in common. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So I want to just make sure you guys understand. I will send a zip with your key terms, okay, after class here. Just so that that's all you're going to have to do. And I would probably make a... Um, a worksheet or a study guide from the answers that I gave you, okay? Like write their definitions or whatever, so it'll help you study for that. Because basically they are, all of those questions that are on your test from this curriculum has to do with those key words, okay? So if you don't know what those words are, you're gonna have a hard time trying to answer some of the questions. Before. So know your key terms, whatever it is. <laughs> all right, so we should be on page 122 in your study guide. Right, and then at 131 in your textbook. Let me pull up my screen, I'll be right back here. All right, here we go. Okay, let me move this over just a little bit. Okay, I'm not getting this thing here. There we go. It's like trying to move it over and you're just catching on things. Okay. So this chapter is on anatomy. This is the building blocks of the human body. And estheticians need to study anatomy and physiology for a couple of reasons. Okay. To develop beneficial facial massage techniques. So you know which bone you're going over. Same thing with hands. Properly apply your skincare products and cosmetic products and have a broader context for understanding the importance of touch within the profession. I know you've heard me say this a lot of times, it's like, it's all about the touch, because it basically is, okay? You can use any type of machine on a client, but when it comes down to it, they want that touch. I know it sounds kind of creepy, but it's not really. We're talking about a facial without having to use like electric brushes or just something else like that. It feels much better when you're using your own hands, you know, for your massage or whatever you're doing, because we give, we give that energy to somebody else when we're doing that facial, okay? So you have to remember that. So it says, why do estheticians study anatomy and physiology? So one, you're gonna put in that develop beneficial facial techniques. Two is going to be the properly applied skincare and cosmetic products. And three is going to be to have a broader context for understanding the importance of touch within the profession, okay? Um, I was, I just realized I was supposed to give you guys the, the numbers on your hours, right? Yesterday. Do you want those numbers so that you'll figure out what you're going to be here? Because some of you are going to be real close to graduating. Yeah, have you figured them out? Huh? Okay, I'm going to go through them really quick. All right. Yasara, you have 104. Angela, 199.75. Jasmine, 501. Griselda, 443. Stephanie, 551. Diana, 257.75. Avery, 145. Danielle, 529.75. Megan, 153.75, and Catalina, 227. Okay, the ones that are close to graduation, okay, when you come in Thursday, Friday, and Saturday this week, 
on your time card, whatever your, um, whatever we put for the rest of the hours for that day, those days, I want you to check to see what you're missing, okay? Like on your sheet, if you're short on anatomy or if you're short on health and safety or short, you know, one of the ops on here, I want you to fill those in for the last couple of days, okay? Um, got it, it is close, it's next week, right, Steph? Next week? Yep. Yeah, next week. Okay, so I wanna make sure you guys know what that is. All right, and if you think there's a discrepancy, you can tell me tomorrow, okay? Once you sign off the last two weeks, all right? Okay, so if you fill Ms. in your one, huh? Go ahead. Um, can, I, can I speak with you after um, this is yeah. over and when you're done recording about? Yes. Oh yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Because I'll have to, um, I'll have to stop the class at like ten to twelve, so we can do it then. Okay. Unless you want to stay in okay, here on break. You. Okay, not a problem. Oh, All right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I, it's probably better if you do it like at ten to twelve because the recording still stays on during break. So if I shut it off, then I have to restart, and everybody has to come in the room later. You know, again, like it's just starting the class. Yeah. Okay. Okay. After then. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Categories of the study of the human body. So anatomy. This is the study of the organs and systems of the body. Okay. It's the study of the organs and systems of the body. Gross anatomy. This is the only way I remember this one is because I used to say my body is just gross. <laughs> okay. So it's the study of structures that can be seen with the naked eye because I can see my body. So I'm like, oh, I don't like that. <laughs> so that's your gross anatomy. Physiology is the study of the structure and functions of the organs, sorry, and systems. And the way I remember this one was because physiology, if you think about it phonically, it sounds like physiology and functions. So there we go, try to bring that back up. There, start to move. Okay, there you go. And then histology is going to be the study of structures too small to be seen except through a microscope. Okay, it's also known as microscopic anatomy, but histology will do. <laughs> All right, I'll leave that up on the screen just for a second. So if you haven't filled it in, you can fill it in. Okay. So did everyone, while they're writing this up, did everyone finish chapter six at the end of the chapter, like on lab, 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, you got your challenges done and stuff? Okay, because I, I have to re tell you guys, if you don't turn the work in on the day that it's supposed to be doing done, you can't get credit for it that day. I can only give it credit for the following day whenever you turn it in. Okay, and that'll go on to already somebody else's, you know, like on the hours for the next day. All right, go to where it says building blocks of the human body, and we're going to start off with cells. Okay. okay. And cells are the basic unit of living matter. Okay. It's composed of protoplasm, which is that gel like substance that contains water, salt, and nutrients that are obtained from the food that we eat, okay? So the three basic parts of that cell are going to be the nucleus, which is the center, the cytoplasm, okay? Which is that like peach kind of color inside there, okay? And the cell membrane where the blue is at. You're lucky I'm not asking you guys to make a cell model <laughs> because I figured there's too much of the P terms to get done for this instead of having to do the cell model. Okay, in your textbook or your um, study guide, it says cells and then it says tissues, organs, systems, right? Does it say that right next to your cells? In your study guide, you guys? Yes. Okay, cells, tissues, organs, systems, right? And the basic unit of living matter. All right, and basically then it's composed of the protoplasm, which is that colorless gel-like substance containing the water, salt, and food nutrients, okay? They vary in size, shape, and function. 
you're taking the three parts of this, that nucleus you can put down as your control center. Okay, your cytoplasm is the production department. Okay. It's where food is stored for growth and repair. And then your cell membrane is gonna be that outer surface of the cell. And to grow and stay healthy, cells need, one, you're gonna put in there food, oxygen, and water. Two, they need the proper temperature. And three, they're going to need the ability to eliminate waste. Cell becomes impaired if those are gone. I didn't get the pages turned for you. Anybody still need this part, put it in there for their workbook? Because I know most of you have finished most of this yeah. already. You need it? Can you repeat the last three? Okay, the um, nucleus. Is that what you're talking about? The nucleus, the cytoplasm, or the three under the cell membrane? I'm thinking um, that the cell membrane. Okay, number one is food, oxygen, and water. Two is proper temperature, maybe it's on the next page. And three is the ability to eliminate water. No, it's not. Excuse me, the ability to eliminate waste because the cell becomes impaired if these are gone. How would I think lemon and, lemon and waste? Can you spell it please? Waste? Is that what you're asking me? What word are you asking me to spell? No, no, the, the answer, all the answer. Can oh. you spell, yeah, please. Okay. okay, the ability to eliminate waste. The cells become impaired if these are gone. Do you need me to repeat it at all? Um, Griselda, is that you? Oh, uh, no, I got it. Thank you. Okay. Who was that? Catalina? No, me. Oh, oh, you were somebody else asking. Where, what's it yeah, I see. Okay. It was me at first. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. Moving on here. This next part is about mitosis, which is known as the indirect division or cells reproduced by dividing in half. When they divide in half, they're known as daughter cells. So you could put in their indirect division, cells reproduced by dividing in half, known as daughter cells. Okay. Your metabolism is the chemical process in which the cells receive nutrients for growth and reproduction. So in a classroom situation, when I'm talking about metabolism, I usually draw a triangle, okay? And the angle going up this way, I would put anabolism, and the angle going down, I would write catabolism. And I would have arrows going down and then the arrows going up. Underneath it, I would write metabolism. And if you want to do that little illustration, I'll explain why I do that. Anabolism is the building up. So that's why it's on the first angle coming up on the pyramid with an arrow going up. You are building up larger molecules from smaller ones. Catabolism on the other side coming down, it's breaking down those larger molecules into smaller ones. And then the metabolism is the whole process together. Okay, it was just a way to help you remember which one was which. You've got to build something up before you can break it back down. Okay, the easiest way to remember it. And sometimes a lot of these things fit in there A before C in the alphabet. So you have to do the anabolism before the catabolism. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, no one's talking today. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give you a little break, okay? 
So I'm gonna give you 10 minutes. So um, I'm gonna give you till 10 after actually. Okay. So I'll see you guys back in at 10 after 11. Sounds good, Ms. Jeannie. Okay, thanks. You still there? Let's close this up for a minute. You're still in here. No one's, <laughs> everyone's gone.
Hold on, I'll be right back. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'll find my keys. Oh, they're in the door. Did you get in?
everybody back. <clears throat> Hi guys, <laughs> putting some stuff together there. So that's what happened, <laughs> Danielle. <laughs> so if I lose my concentration, that's what's going on. Hey, Miss Janie, are we actually going into a second lockdown as far as you know, or do you not know still? Not yet, we haven't heard anything yet. Okay, yeah, same thing at my work. They keep talking about it and then mm -hmm. It's just no like concrete answers, so. Yeah, I was told I've got to get um, two weeks paperwork together just gotcha. for a backup, that's all. And then somebody else said they, they thought it might be like two months. So unless he makes a statement, wasn't he supposed to make a statement yesterday? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I've been busy lately, so I haven't been really like keeping up on the news. I'm wondering <laughs> if he was supposed to do it, like doesn't he do his little 12 o'clock you know, meetings or something. Yeah, I, I I'll have to look after class then. I'll see. Okay. I was just curious if maybe the school had heard anything. No, not yet. We haven't. But the first thing they would do is just shut us down so that we can't work on each other. And we're back on dolls again. So yeah. And that's kind of making it difficult when you want to do a body treatment because you need a body to do it. I don't have any body parts to put together. <laughs> But uh, you saw how I had to put the, the back facials together. <laughs> Do you remember that? With the doll heads, we were using it as the back. <laughs> I Oh, I wasn't here for that, no. Okay, we took the little doll heads that you guys were practicing with, and we yeah. put them on their face, on the bed, and we tried to make shoulders for it. <laughs> so we could practice doing a, a back facial. Remember that? That was nuts. But hey, we were trying to do the best we could with what we had to work with, okay? We had no other choice. I could just let you guys do nothing all day, you know? I mean, you're here, you may as well learn how to do something even if it's on that <laughs> body. I was just trying to figure out how are we gonna do a Brazilian racks? I don't have an area to <laughs> And I couldn't go to the one. <laughs> In class, okay. were we supposed going to back see to the page? Oh. Oh. Never mind. Well, yeah, because at first that's what it was. We were like, the only people, at the first part of it, he said that we could do it outside. I'm like, who wants to get their, their area done outside? Okay. Oh, I just never realized that we were actually gonna get a demo on that in class. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> but he was telling us that we could only do it at first, it was only doing it outside. We weren't allowed to do it on the inside. And now we can do it on the inside, but it's like, are you shaking your head like this for? <laughs> Danielle? Do you want to be model? want to go outside and get their hoo-ha waxed. Right? Who wants to do that? Nobody does. Especially in this cold. Like, could you imagine how uncomfortable right? that would be? Exactly. I'm like, oh, yeah. Our whole industry is about comfort and, you know, pampering and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, that's comfortable. Jeez. He's just a little overboard. Okay. We'll go back to page 123. Okay. And we have tissues. So let me pull up the screen again. 123, which one? 123 in the study guide. And it should be on tissues. So that's what's going to come up on your screen here in a second. So let me know when you get this on your screen. It should be coming up right now. Do you have it on your screen? Yeah. Yes, it's okay. there. All right. So we just covered cells. Tissues now are groups of cells of the same kind. So think about it this way. Two or more cells make up a tissue, all right? There's a reason why I'm telling you this because it's gonna kind of go with another little order when we get to organs and systems. But there are five primary types of tissue. Epithelial are your skin cells. Let me get trying to get in, okay? Did you know that every time you go to use your bank card at the bank, you slough off skin cells where those numbers are on your card. So they can literally take your bank card and pull up your DNA off of it because it kind of gets stuck in those little numbers. I'm like, that's kind of creepy. There's other ways of getting it, but that's what the epithelial cells are. They're actually internal also. They're like inside your, your stomach lining, but they're also outside because I know you've heard of a bleeding ulcer, right? Okay, that's basically where those epithelial cells are too. Connective tissue, okay, this is going to support, protect, and hold the body together. 
I remember this one as the ankle bones connected to the shin bone and the shin bones connected to the knee bone. And you start thinking that little song right there, it's connective tissue. All right, nerve tissue carries messages to and from the brain, and then it's gonna coordinate a body function. So if you think about it, <clears throat> when we talk about our systems there, not the nervous system is the only system that has to work with each one of those because they can't work without that nervous system. The brain has to tell the other systems what to do. So same thing in regards to the nerve tissue. Muscular tissue now is going to contract when it's stimulated to produce motion when you're exercising. And then you have liquid tissue, which carries food, waste, products, and hormones to the rest of the body. So the one you really have to be comfortable with and knowing about is that connective tissue because that is on state board, the connective tissue is, okay? That's why I said there's an easy way to remember it. It's connected and supports and protects and holds that body together. <clears throat> Organs now, okay, these are going to be separate body structures. There we go. There. Organs are going to perform specific functions and are composed of two or more different tissues. So two or more cells make up a tissue, two or more tissues are going to turn into your organs. So on your page right there, where it says organs, you can put it down in their separate body structures that perform specific functions. Okay, because each one of these will do a specific thing. So your brain actually controls all your body functions. Okay, it tells the body what to do. Your eyes, they're gonna provide vision so you can see. Your heart is going to circulate blood. Your lungs are gonna supply the blood with oxygen. Your stomach and intestines will digest food. Your liver is going to remove toxic byproducts of digestion. The kidneys are gonna eliminate water and waste products. And your skin, it forms the body's external protective layer. And it's also known as the body's largest organ. Okay, so each one of those had a function to do. There are eight of them. Okay. We're going to go into systems now. Okay, and your systems are gonna be groups of body structures and or organs that perform functions for the body. So moving on to two more cells, two more tissues, two more organs, and then we get into our body systems. There are 10, and the way to remember the 10 is using the acronym Dr. I am screen. Okay, and you write that out as D stands for digestive, R stands for respiratory, I stands for integramentary, M stands for muscular, S is skeletal, C is circulatory, R is reproductive, E is excretory, E is endocrine, and N is nervous system. So the first letter of each one of those words actually spells out the acronym Dr. I am screen. Okay, so let's break these down. All right, your skeletal is the first one in your study guide, okay? It's gonna provide the framework of the body. How many of you have ever skinned a fish, taken the bones right out of it, okay? What happens to the fish, it gets a little floppy, right? Okay, so I think you left her in already. <laughs> okay, so what would happen if somebody deboned us, took all the bones out, our whole skin would just drop to the floor because it, it doesn't have a framework to attach itself to. All right, your muscular part, it moves the body, makes it able for us to move around. Your circulatory is going to circulate the blood through the body. Your nervous system is gonna send and receive those body messages. Digestive supplies food to the body. Your excretory eliminates waste from the body. And this is like, Elimination part, think about it that way. Excretory eliminates, it's your exit system. 
Your respiratory is going to control the breathing of the body. The endocrine is going to control growth, health, and reproduction of the body. These are all your hormones, basically. And then reproductive, this is where we actually procreate. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> all right, and then the integumentary covers and protects the entire body. Okay, any questions on any of that? So if you notice, there's a little blue box next to it. It says cells make up tissues, tissues make up organs, organs make up systems. It's just a little saying to help you remember that because there are questions on that. The part of the anatomy that's on your state board has to do with the systems and their functions, okay? I'm just gonna tell you that it's basically what it says on your written part of the state board. It basically tells you what they're gonna ask you on the board, what type of information you need to know. So at the bottom of it, it says, did you know that your eye is the same size at birth as it is now? Okay, that's why I had you do those little fun facts at the beginning or weird facts. Okay, <clears throat> so I know if you've taken this with me before, I've kind of made you do this before, but some of you haven't done this, okay? So you're going to write a humorous paragraph today along with your homework, okay? And this paragraph, you're going to use the eight primary organs and you're gonna write a humorous paragraph. So the experts say that it helps the brain make associations when there's a story format to the learning. So when a certain approach is taken to add variety or uniqueness, we try to remember it. So I'm gonna give you the one the book actually gives us as a a diagram basically for you to follow. My brain, which normally has control of all my body functions, did not seem to be working on that fateful, fateful Friday morning. I had just left the eye doctor's office after having my annual checkup to help ensure my eyes continue to produce 40-80 vision. When I thought I heard my stomach growl and has digested a rather large breakfast. Well, it wasn't my stomach that was growling. It was the street sweeper that I absentmindedly stepped out in front of as I left the curb. I was rushed to the hospital as my skin, the outer protective layer of my body started to tingle. I remember that my heart was racing as it pushed blood through my body and my lungs seemed fully expanded, trying to grasp as much oxygen as possible. Finally, I heard the reassuring sound of my doctor as he stood next to my hospital bed and said, we thought we were going to, we thought we were going to have complications with your kidneys and their ability to eliminate water and waste from your body. However, your kidneys seem to be working fine. Then we felt it had to be your liver and that you might not be able to remove toxic byproducts of digestion. But that's not the case, your liver's fine. It is, however, time for you to wake up from your dream. So that's the illustration I can tell you. You're gonna take those eight organs. Okay, I'm gonna move this screen back up here. Okay, and you're gonna make a little story. Okay. So I'm gonna put these up on the screen right here. Here you go. So not only do you have key terms to do, you're going to write a paragraph using and describing those eight organs. Okay, make it humorous. That's how we remember anyways. We will always remember a dirty joke for some reason. So since no one else is gonna see it, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so you guys understand what you're going to do? Yusara, do you know what you're going to be doing? This one I know, you know, I can make like some story, brain, eyes, heart, lungs, okay, but I, good. yeah, I do understand the, the before. For here, uh, 124, 124. 124 about what part? Yeah, we, we answer this one. Oh, show me what you're looking at here, hon. Let me see, let me get the screen up on you. Okay, show you me. Tell us okay. before, yeah. All right, hold on, I'm trying to get your, your screen here. Okay, oh, show okay. me again now. Yeah, this one. What page is that one? Okay, well, that's well, basically what we went through. Yeah, this one. We just went through that. Uh-huh, that information is on page 135 in your textbook. Okay. Okay, 
Yeah. It's basically those are your body systems. Okay. Uh, so we have just uh, just beige 124. Yes, but listen to me. What I want you to do is when I close this this um, Zoom class, you can turn the Zoom back on and it, I will go through that information and you can slow it down so that you can actually fill that in. Okay. You just have to watch the Zoom again. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Where, when? One o'clock? Um, it probably will be up about two o'clock. Oh, okay. 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 All right. Because I don't know how soon it gets up on the YouTube. Okay. Same guys, Zoom? Same yes, one? On Zoom. Uh -huh. It's on YouTube. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. All right. Same thing with, like when you're trying to understand the test questions and stuff like that, you can replay that the Zoom and get that information again. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let me pull that other screen up because it's got some little questions in there to help you guys with. It's like a review. Yeah, good review. Okay. So hold on. Let me know when you got to see my screen. Yeah, it's coming. You've got it? Okay. Yeah. Come on. It's like stuck. I'm stupid here. Here we go. I want those to just keep hitting the button on there, right? Okay, here's our self check. Okay, number one, true or false? Muscles are the basic units of living matter. Anyone? False. False. It's yes. cells. Yes, thank you. Two, the epithelial tissue covers and protects the body surfaces and internal organs. True. True. Yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> Three, the study of organs and systems of the body is called? Anatomy. Good. Okay, another name for histology? The um, study of small structures under a microscope. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, that's, that is it. It's also known as microscopic. Oh. Mic microscopic anatomy, isn't it? Histology, yeah. Okay. Um, five, the study of the functions of the organs and systems of the body is called? Physiology. Uh, yep, because it sounds like functions, right? If you're just going by sounds, not by spelling. <laughs> All right. Six, the study of the human body as seen with the naked eye is called? Gross anatomy. Gross anatomy. Okay. Cells are composed of a gel-like substance called? Protoplasm. <laughs> Protoplasm, yes. Okay. Cells make up blank, which make up organs. So uh, cells make up? Tissue. Tissues, yes. Okay, which make up organs. And then organs make up? Systems. Systems, good. Okay, a group of body structures that together perform one or more vital functions of the body is known as? System. Huh? System. Systems, yes. Okay, good. So I think this is just, yeah. Okay, so it's just gonna give you the answers. The first one was false. The second one was true. Anatomy was right. Microscopic anatomy, physiology. Did you guys know all these answers? <laughs> all right. Gross anatomy, protoplasm, tissues, and system, and then a system. So you did very well. All right, let's go through the facts. Okay, again, anatomy is the study of the organs and systems of the body. Physiology is the study of the function of the organs and systems of the body. building blocks of the human body are the cells, the tissues, the organs, and the body system. Cells are a structure of a cell consists of your nucleus, your cytoplasm, and your cell membrane. Tell me the definition of a nucleus. Someone. The control center of a cell. Good, how about cytoplasm? It protects the cell. Production department, right? Okay, how about the cell membrane? It 
It's the outer surface of it? Yep. Good. Okay. So it's telling you right there, it's the basic unit of life and organelles perform most of the cell's activities. Okay, there we go. Human cells reproduce by dividing in half, a process referred to as mitosis or indirect division. That is a state board question, okay? So you need to know what mitosis means. Metabolism, this is the chemical process by which the cells receive nutrients, okay? And then again, the organelles perform most of those cells activities. Did you guys write the, or draw that little um, triangle to help you remember that? Okay, because it will help you. Because metabolism has two divisions, okay? The anabolism is going to build up the larger molecules from smaller ones. And your catabolism is gonna be the breaking down of larger molecules into smaller ones. I also remember this catabolism is somebody eating something, so it's breaking it down right there. <laughs> That's kind of gross, but that was another way to help you remember. All right, tissues. These are groups of cells of the same kind, and there are five types. Epithelial tissue, okay, is what? Give me the definition. What does it do? Covers and protects. Okay, connective tissue, what does it do? Learn. Learn what? Learn. Connects what? the tissue. Thank you. Okay, nerve tissue, what does it do? Carries messages. Correct. From the body. Mm -hmm. Okay, muscular tissue, what does it do? Moves the body. Yep, and your liquid tissue. Most of the body. It's going to carry food and waste products and hormones through the body. Yeah. Okay. All right. Move it on. Which one is the one that's important to you out of those five? Do you remember? Which one is important that it's connective tissue is the one that's important. Okay. Here we go again with the organs separate body structures that perform specific functions. They're composed of two or more different types of tissues. There are eight primary organs, the brain, the eyes, the heart, the lungs, the stomach and intestines, liver, kidneys, and the skin. Okay. Those are the ones that you're going to be using to make your little story today. Body systems. These are a group of organs that together will perform one or more vital functions of the body. So we have the skeletal. What does the skeletal do? Provides framework to the body. Thank you. And your muscular system? Moves the body. The body, circulatory. Circulate blood through the body. Nervous system? And without, we the, fall the body down. What? Without the, the skeletal, the body, it's, you know, it's coming down. Oh, yeah. Um, what does the nervous system do? <laughs> Control the uh, mind. It receives messages. Yes, thank you. The digestive system. Danielle, don't laugh, okay? Danielle, don't laugh, okay? We study. No, I'm not laughing. Excuse me. When I say something, you laugh, okay? okay. I wasn't Stop. laughing. Stop okay. it. Stop it. Jesus, Jesus, you okay. put you, your boyfriend and you start laughing. Stop it. Oh, stop, stop. I'm not laughing at you. Respect okay. people. Okay. Cut off. Excretory. Eliminates waste from body. Thank you. Respiratory. Controls our breathing. How about the endocrine system? Controls growth, health, and reproduction. Thank you. And then Controls. the reproductive, reproductive system? Procreate. Yes. Okay. And then your integumentary. Covers and protects body. Yes. There you go. So that pretty much covers what this part of the chapter is. Tomorrow we'll go through, or not tomorrow, Tuesday, 
And we'll start to go through each one of the systems slowly so you can fill that out, okay? Um, I do want you to do one other thing for me. Tomorrow morning when you come back in, give me, um, give me your idea of what the skeletal system is. It could be like a sentence, okay? But your idea of what the skeletal system is. Because I've already told you it's the framework, but you come up with something a little bit different than that, okay? But similar, you know what I mean? I want the same kind of definition, but I want a different one than what I used. <laughs> so you're gonna bring that tomorrow morning, all right? I will get the keywords up for you, okay? And then you're going to write your story, correct? Yes, I have to see your faces, I can't see. There we go. Okay, is everybody comfortable with what they're gonna be doing today? I will get those up as quickly as possible, okay? They'll be up before noon. I'm gonna cut it short today just so that we can keep quiet a little bit, and relax and enjoy the rest of the day, all right? So I'll call Christine. it, uh-huh. Okay, so just to be sure, we're doing the, the paragraph and then the test questions and then the, um, the terms. Right. And yeah, I haven't sent you the terms. I'm gonna actually send the whole thing on there again so you'll know exactly what you're doing oh, okay. on the zip, okay? okay. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna let you guys go. Um, Griselda, stay on, okay? Griselda? All right, good. Okay, I'll see you guys tomorrow, I, I okay? Would, yeah. I Forget your statement. We're gonna do state board tomorrow. All right. Okay, bye. bye. You guys. Right, let me stop the recording here, okay? All right. Uh, hold on. There we go. Oh.